right. Where do we put the uh, stickers? Uh, oh. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Cool. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Lee Kai from NUS Mods. Right. So today I we're gonna talk about NUSMods.com. But what is NUS Mods? Anyone here who doesn't know what NUS Mods is? All right. Seems like everyone knows, but we'll still just go through it, right? So NUS Mods is a timetable builder for all your random uh, school module stuff, your timetable planner. And there is a question like, what NUS Mods mean? So does anyone here know? Anyone wants to give it a try? The third one, NUS Modifications. Yes, that's right. It's NUS Modifications. And for that, you get a sticker, but we have too many. so. It, Everyone's gonna get a sticker. <laughs> yes. Yes. Sorry? All right. I'm just gonna pass you a bunch of stickers. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah. So anyone who wants any more stickers have to make friends with him. Right? Yeah. Right. So what are we gonna talk about today? So it's very simple. It's just like going a rough history of what any more is and how it came to be, then it was, we're going to talk about the rough architecture of how we build it and how you can start contributing to NUS mods, as well as like some random ideas and thoughts we have about what NUS mods in the future will look like. So how do we get here? So the entire story of how NUS mods got here is must start from our founder in 2011. So his name is Bang, as in uh, Bang's Bang. So Bang had this itching problem because the timetable builder then was like terrible, like really hard to use, and he got very frustrated. So basically, he decided to build NUS mods as an exercise, right? And uh, coincidentally, it solved his problem because he wanted to learn some JavaScript. So it was like a good fit. And in general, this is how we want to promote building things, which is try to fix what is going on with your life, like certain small issues that you don't feel like there is a good solution for, or even if there is a solution, it's not like really nice to use. Like you can invent your own way to build things, right? Because we are, after all, software engineers. And building things is a really good way to practice your things. So if you want to learn something new, like JavaScript, you can build a web app. And if you want to learn some Python, maybe you can build some weird machine learning output, like uh, deep fake your face over Donald Trump. Yeah, things like that. So we had many, many iterations. So the slides have all the links to all of this, but I'll just show you. So the very first version is called core set. For those who don't know, uh, we used to have this old website called Course that had all the module information stuff, but now it's gone. Yeah, we we killed them. No, you got replaced by mod, right? Right? Yes. Which? I mean, we we <laughs> yeah, sort we of replaced them. We sort of replaced them in some functionality. Yeah. 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 So we can see like very early <coughs> idea of what NUS mods was gonna look like. The UI wasn't like very pretty, and so you, when you type in, you know, you got weird stuff that when you hover over, like this won't ever work on a mobile phone, right? So you know, and in order to move modules around, you had to drag and drop. Yeah, so it turned out into this kind of layout. So, I mean, it worked. <coughs> it's functional, and it's better than what they had. So it was a good idea, right? Then we started iterating more and more. So this was built by Bang and partially parts of it by Yang Sun, who is the second person who worked on NUS mods. So you can see like it has gotten a lot more powerful. Now you have filters, now you have various faculty selections. You know, you could Add modules now, and you had a timetable builder that looks way better, right? So the same idea that you could track stuff, 
is there. Then Yangsun came into the picture and he decided to build a new version. I'm like, not sure if it was a complete rewrite, but it was built with very modern tech then. Like JavaScript moves like a bullet, right? But this was considered modern, so it was like marionette and handlebars. Yeah. And it looks quite modern actually. Even now then it still looks quite modern. Yeah. So you have all your various drag and drop. You had module search with all the very powerful selections. And you had like prerequisite trees that were rendered with dtree.js and you have discus for all the reviews. And you had venues to look up. All right, you had NS Whispers link embedded right in there. And you have news and other a lot of more powerful things. Yeah. So this is the user interface that most of you should be familiar with. So this is the third version of NUS mods. So this was built in 2016, right? And it was triggered by this random issue saying, oh, um, our stack is starting to get a little old and the modern version of web apps are built with React and Redux and we want to move towards that direction. And just so happened I was building my own version of NUS mods and I was like, hey, you guys have the same requirements that I built, like mobile first, um, having new color schemes, adaptable color schemes, night mode, you know. So I joined and I brought over a few a few other people and we built this together. So this is a current interface. I won't go too much into it. <coughs> yeah. So now I'll hand over to Yiliang who will go over how and what our architecture is. Yeah. Yeah, hello. So Oh. Yes. Right. So um so I I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> okay. <laughs> so like how how uh okay. Problems. So like um many of you will be wondering how NUS mods actually works. Um b b b because like as a user it's quite cool, right? You open NUS mods and it just works, but uh, you don't really think about how uh how things are laid out behind behind the scenes. So uh, th th this will be a high level like uh, discussion of NUS mods as a whole as, as a system. So I don't need that. <laughs> so um, so it, we won't go into the code. It will just be a bunch of diagrams. So um, it's actually really simple. Okay, it, it's just this. So um, and and NUS mods can be divided into two main parts. Uh, so uh, there's the front end, which is the web, the nusmods.com website, the one that you're familiar with, and there's the back end, which uh, currently consists of two services. So the first is the Elasticsearch module, uh, uh, module search service <coughs> powered by Elasticsearch. So what th what this is is the um, it's actually our module. If you go to the module uh, search page, the module tab of NUS mods um, is powered by Elasticsearch. So we have very fancy features that I will show you later. And then the second one is just a data server, uh, which provides the module data and all that to the front end when you load NUS mods. So um, the architecture is really very simple. It's just um, this is at the highest level. It's just like that. Um, so the reason why it is so simple is because of historical reasons. So um, as Lika I mentioned just now, uh, NUS mods. Um, in historically, NUS mods has very very few people working on it. So back then, uh, first one was Bing. Bing was the first guy who worked on it. Then after that, there was Yangshun. So the, the NUS mods was built and maintained by one person at that time. And even though like basically whole of NUS using it as we are as we are using it now. Uh, so right now the NUS mods team has like four people, three developers and one designer. So it's still very tiny, uh, which means that we all need to like conserve our engineering resources because we, it's very limited, right? So we try to make sure that things are very very simple, and uh, so that it can be maintained or like it can just be left left to run even if nobody has time to work on it. That that is a that is a goal behind why NUS mods is structured in such a simple way. So uh, but. Um, it's actually not so simple. So uh, th this is at the highest level, but we can drill down a little bit in, um, and it will look like that. So th this is basically how data flows throughout NUS mods 
at a slightly deeper level. Okay, I, I realize this part may be a bit low for the people at the back, but I'm sorry. So, um, yeah, so the, the first thing you could you would ask is, uh, how does NUS mods get this data? And it actually all starts here. So, the, um, so starting, uh, yeah, starting this year, we've actually had access to uh, NUS APIs directly. So what happens is that we will take, uh, so our, our, we call it a scraper, but it's basically a tool. Uh, so it's written in Node.js. It's, it's, a, it's just a system that will run every hour and it will pull data in from NUS. So it will, it will, take, it will like, look up all the module information and timetable information for NUS. Then it will collate, collate and uh, process some of the data. So it will generate like, the prerequisite trees and all that. And then it will dump into some files on the disk. So and, and NUS mods doesn't have a database. So we, we store all our data on the hard drive. And it's actually pretty cool. So you can, yeah, uh, you, you, you can see it. You can see here. So if you go to api.nusmods.com, you will notice that you have this list, which is uh, basically generated by Nginx. Um, so you can browse, you can browse the data. So th this, is, this is what the old data look, look like. Uh, we have like uh, semester two, for example, and then you have a whole bunch of JSON files. It's just sitting on a hard, on a, on a hard drive on a server somewhere. That, that's really it. So you could open anything and then you can, you can just view, okay, I guess there's nothing this well. But you, yeah, you get the idea. Um, oh. Yeah, so the, the, the files, as mentioned, is uh, served by Nginx, which is a reverse proxy. So, but you, uh, you can think of it as a uh, file survey if you're not familiar with re uh, reverse proxies. So you have a bunch of files on disk. We serve it up to, uh, through uh, api.nusmods.com, which uh, this reverse proxy is listening to. Um, yeah, so at the same time, uh, because now we have Elasticsearch, so this is also a new thing. We um, recently implemented that. So uh, now, uh, since like July or so, we have had this. So previously we didn't have this. So it's even easier, as you can see. Um, but, but, but now we have Elasticsearch. So what, um, yeah, so we need to update Elasticsearch uh, whenever we scrape so that uh, the data on the, ser on the search server is synced up with the actual module data that we have. So um, Elasticsearch is hosted on the cloud. Uh, we use this thing called uh, Elastic Cloud, which is basically a serverless uh, hosted Elasticsearch and Kibana, if you're familiar with that. Um, so the, the raw data on Elasticsearch actually looks something like that. So you have a whole bunch of like modules and each module has some stored data. And so because Elasticsearch is optimized for search, like it's a, it's a search engine. So you could, uh, we enable things, very fancy search features. Um, if you refresh this, you, you notice this search, like if you ever open the network tab on the, of your web debugger, I don't know whether any of you actually do this like for fun sometimes, but there is this underscore search this is uh, it hits a uh, Elasticsearch endpoint, which is over here. And so uh, we get very fancy Elasticsearch uh, features. Like uh, if you search for like lawyer, it will it will um, it will suggest it will actually suggest like uh, like that you search for laws instead. So you, you get this very fancy like very advanced spell checking and um, sorry. Yeah, th there is fuzzy match also. Yeah, the, the, this one is like a su suggestion. So, yeah, so spell, spell, yeah, fuzzy match. Um, yeah, so you, you could get things like that. Yeah, so that that is our backend. That's the whole of our backend. That, that there is no much more to this. Um, then on the other side will be our front end, which is um, yeah. We all our code is stored within this website. Uh, so we have we use a mono repo structure, which uh, Lee Kai will talk about later. But we have a website code. So the website is written in React and Redux. So it's a very very modern uh, web web uh, tech stack. Uh, so React Redux Webpack. You you SCSS. Uh, okay, I, I guess that's not very modern anymore. But uh, so we have that. We will compile that uh, th because it's JavaScript. So we can compile it into a static bundle, uh, which also is not on this. It's similar to that. And we use a reverse proxy, which we use a different reverse proxy in this case, but we use a reverse proxy to uh, to serve it up to users. So it's very, it's also a very simple structure. So this compiles, this compiles. We run this compilation whenever we want to update NUS mods. <coughs> then after that, it, it's just on this that we can just serve it. And so it's very cheap to serve. Um, the the one fancy complicated thing is this this export service. So if you ever notice when you uh, like when you export your timetable, it lags a bit. Okay, it, it, it takes a little bit of time, like th this download button on the right. 
yeah, th- th- these buttons actually hit the export server. And the, the so the, it's actually quite a funny hack. Um, what, what it does is that it opens NUS mods on a, on a headless uh, Chrome instance on the server. So um, yeah, we, we, which is why this arrow, right? So we actually load the website on the server, then we take a screenshot and we send it to you. <laughs> it's genius, it's genius. Yes, that, that, that's how it works. Yeah, it, it's so smart, right? Yeah, it's, it's kind of like hack, love. Uh, yeah, and ev- everything goes through the, all traffic goes through the reverse proxy to this. Oh, yeah. Uh, it just, you guys may think this is a hack, right? But actually, this is like the proper way to do things. Previously, we had a hackier solution. We actually rendered uh, HTML directly into a canvas. Then through the canvas, it generates a PNG file. So we had no backend. Like everything was client side. Yeah, that was way hackier. And with our proper solution, you actually get consistent screenshots now. Oh yeah, I, I, I think the problem with that was that I think Safari couldn't export PDF or something, right? I, something was broken in Safari, so, which is why we had to do this. Yeah, so, and um, th- this is basically how NUS mods, um, th- this is NUS mods. There, there is not much more to this. Um, the various proxies do more, a few more things. Uh, and also, oh yeah, I, I guess another thing is, um, so some of these things are actually served with Docker. So if, if you look at this box, this box over here, uh, you notice that uh, we, we say this is on 3.nusmods.com. This actually, so we have actually have two digital ocean droplets, which are two, basically two servers. Uh, one is at 3.nusmods.com. This one runs some Docker containers. So this and this and this are in Docker. But then uh, this is not. So th- this is our old one dot um, uh, server. So <laughs> we actually wanted to put this under Docker as well. Then we can combine everything into one server. But we are getting there, and it's taking a lot of work, and we don't really know how to do it. So that's why we have two servers, like that. Yeah. So that that, that that's actually all for the architecture. So I'll pass on the time to Likai again to talk about how you can contribute to NES mods. Yes, it's highlighted for, for some reason. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Oh no. Uh, all right. I think. Okay, okay. I think it sort of does make sense. We want to highlight this section. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so why do you want to contribute to any response? Right. So. I would think for myself, my primary reason for spending so much time on it is that I actually contribute some real world impact to students, to all of you guys, right? And myself included. Like I can't imagine my life without any mods. It would be so painful. Yeah. So your work when you contribute to any mods is used by yourself, your friends, your friends' friends, your friends' friends' friends and so on. Like everyone I talk to will be like, hey, I contribute to any mods and then it's like you generate more topics and stuff. Yeah. And <coughs> Really, a lot of people use NUS mods, like way more than I would ever expect. Like, we have analytics that show this. <coughs> so, these are our visits over time. But the <coughs> important part is like this section down here. For those behind who can't see, we get like, uh, we got like 2.2 million page views. Is it? We didn't last month. Yeah, just this last month. So, <coughs> that's how many people are. Hitting right? And you know, it's like what sixty-three thousand searches. Yeah. You know, and we, I think for unique number of visitors, roughly sixty thousand people. Yeah. So that's like the entire school body who's using NUS mods. Yeah. So that's how much impact you guys will be doing by just contributing to NUS mods. Yeah, and the next thing f- for me as well, right? When I started contributing to NUS mods, is I didn't really know that much. I only knew front end. I only knew like Vue.js, and I didn't know React. I didn't knew no Redux. I didn't know what Webpack was, right? So the previous 
contributor, Yang Sun, actually guided me along and he taught me <coughs> so much. I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't know as much if he wasn't there, like guiding me along the way, being a mentor and like giving advice. And similarly, I've learned things from my peers as well, like Yiliang, like uh, the other contributor who is Yijiang. Yeah, uh, sorry, I'm so bad at names. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but you know, I just learned so much from everyone. And it, that's how you grow as an engineer, which is also another reason why you should contribute. So the next reason is, you know, you gain experience. In US mods, we use a lot of modern technology. And throughout this e entire experience, you get to like play around with things. You can make mistakes because, well, if we screw up, well, you're, you're getting impacted as well. So you probably should fix it. Yeah. And the technology that we use are also used by companies that you would want to apply to, right? So it's not some legacy Java framework that we have. Uh, yeah, so it's, yeah, but at the same time, it's also quite weird. Yes, so you know, you can gain experience doing all sorts of things. Yeah, so this is a list of what we use. Don't be scared if you don't understand any of them. I only knew, I only knew this, this when I started. Yeah, that's all I knew when I started, right? Yeah, the rest was like a slowly figured thing, so. Yeah. Cool. Yes, and I think this wasn't really obvious then, but now it's quite obvious. So when you contribute to any of mods, as a core contributor with like a lot of commits and pull requests, you actually get some sort of attention to your skills. So because it's public, because it's out there for everyone to see, people recognize the work that you put in and they know the quality of your work, right? So it's obvious to employers like why they should choose you over the other intern or the other full-time worker. So personally, when I submitted my first resume to, I think it was a computer science, computer science fair, bad names, yes. But I submitted my resume at Carousel and turns out the recruiter actually circled my resume and put like must, like must find and get them to, you know, try out for Carousel. Yeah, so that got my foot into Carousel which then got me into other places. And Ilyang has a similar story. Yeah, so um, I've, so I asked, I, I asked one of the, okay, so my intern manager at, at Facebook actually told me that uh, one of the reasons why like they, they, ex uh, they hired me as an intern is to, is because uh, he, he could look at, he could look at my, my PRs on, for NUS mods and he can, he can get a holistic view of like what it would be like to work with me as an engineer. Because I like a bunch of big PRs, especially so where, where you, you know you, you basically list out like pros and cons of various engineering decisions and all that, and also like uh like the code quality of like your work. Yeah, so I I, I think in general it's very valuable to have uh, such public uh, work that people can use, and also at the same time you have some impact. So it's not like a very like contrived project. Uh, so you have impact, and you can uh, people can see what it'd be like to work with you as an engineer. So this is one for the people who support open source. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're interested, I have Facebook open source stickers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So the other thing with NUS mods is we are non-profit. Like we don't get paid, and we do this for ourselves and to help other people around us. So it's not saying that you know. Uh, we're only doing, we're in it for the money. And we also do it for some philosophical stuff, like, oh, it's open source, and open source is good. Like, we should contribute to open source. Yeah. All right, so how to get your feet wet is pretty simple, I would think. It's just picking issues that you're interested in and issues that you think might be a good entry point to understanding how NUS mods work. And just like asking questions if you're not familiar with it, reading up documentation and you know, just keeping it up with it. 
for me, my first PR took took a while like, because uh, it was a like, webpack stuff and I knew zero thing about webpack. Yeah, so you know, I saw like fake it till I make it. Yes, and that's how I got in. Yeah. Yeah. So for our demo, we're going to assume that you know Git GitHub how to CD into a directory, how to view the code, how to edit the code, then uh, how to click save or control S. Yeah. So I'll hand it over to Yiliang who's gonna step through. Yeah, so uh, for for our demo, so we're gonna basically uh, we are going to demo like what what it will be like to uh, actually con contribute something to NES mods, like the entire flow from getting the code onto your computer, setting up, and then making a PR to NES mods. So you can actually we'll actually make a PR to ourselves right now. <laughs> yes, oh no. Yeah. So w what what we are going to do today is that um, okay. So uh, some context. So basically, NES mods has a. Uh, Yeah, so um, NUS mode has a beta mode, in case you're not aware. But we have a beta mode where if you enable it, you will have a today and a, and a planner tabs in the, in the sidebar. And so th th these are features that, uh, that are not completely ready yet. Uh, they are somewhat buggy, but uh, they, they kind of work. So if you haven't ever tried it out, you, you should. But um, for the purpose of today, we are going to assume that like, we, like, these features are great and that we are going to release it to the public. So we are basically going to disable uh, beta mode on these, like right now. So, um, yeah, okay, can. yeah. So um, our our GitHub repo is on. Our GitHub repo is here. It's a uh, GitHub.com slash NES modification slash slash NES mod. But if you can't remember it, you can actually go through and you can go to nesmods.com. At the bottom, there is a GitHub link. So you can just click that. You will end up at you will end up on GitHub. And so the first thing you need to do is that you need to fork the fork the repo to your own to your own account. So we are assuming that you are, you all have a GitHub accounts, but if you don't, you just need to sign up for one. It's quite simple. Then you just click the fork button up there, and it will copy it to your account. So we will do it now. It usually takes a a while. Yeah. So um now if if you basically clone it to your account, so your account his account has uh it will be at uh, GitHub slash Likai slash Anyasmod, and this is not on your account. Uh, you have you have our code on your account, so you can modify it however you wish. So uh, to do that, the first thing you do is you need to clone it to your computer. So uh, th this is basically uh, the git, the git clone process. Uh, if you are familiar with git, that should be quite obvious. Um, anyone not familiar with git? By the way, is everyone familiar with git? Okay, great. Then yeah, because otherwise you may get a bit lost because uh, the contribution process requires git. Yeah, so th th this is just uh, we are just cloning the repo now. Um, and you must actually clone the repo because uh, otherwise you can't push it because you don't have right access to our repo, our repo on on our account, right? So then you won't be able to push your code up. So if you fork it, then you can push your code up. Uh, yeah. So now now we just open the code and he's using VS Code. I I would recommend Vim if anyone's asking. <laughs> So um, and and NES mods, as we mentioned just now, NES mods is a is a mono repo. So th what this means is that all our code for NES mod is stored in one giant repo. It's it's not that I mean it's not that giant lah, But um, basically, everything is uh, split into a bunch of files, uh, a bunch of folders. So you can see like the export server is up here, then the the website is stored here. So it's uh it should be quite self explanatory. So today, what we, because we are working on a website, actually most of the most of the work on NES mods is done in a the website. There's uh barely anything being done for the other things. But uh, so you basically go into the website folder, and there will be a readme. Which should be rendered, but I guess, I guess it's not rendering. There we go. So the, 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 the readme is quite comprehensive. Uh, it, when you open it, you will be able to see, like, uh, we go through details like how the folders are organized within the website project and other things like that. So um, but what we're going to follow today is the is a setup process. So there is the somewhere at the top. Yeah, that, that, that's what I was talking about, the folders. So we, we are going to um, do the, we are going to set it up on, our, our, on this fresh clone. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to run Yarn to install all the dependencies for website onto, onto the machine. 
So we basically seed into website. Um, you didn't see it in the website. Yeah, you need to see it in the website first. Then you then you run yarn and it will install all the dependencies to your machine. And then once that's done, uh, according to README, you run uh, yarn start, which will start the server and you will be able to open NUS mods on your machine. But uh, we need to wait for this. Oh, in the meantime, uh, you can get um, stickers. Yeah, uh, I think you could pass it around. Yeah, okay, so yeah, yarn is done, so it, it has installed all the dependencies for uh, it, uh, yeah, and then you just run yarn start so that you start the server. Yeah, see, the, the, the Yarn Start command will actually open uh, the, your browser to Locals 8080, which is uh, what, what we're doing. So now we're waiting for Webpack to compile the, compile the code. <coughs> so if, yeah, if, uh, for some context, I guess, uh, Yarn, Yarn is our dependency manager. Uh, like it's like NPM, but better. It's, I mean, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be better. That, that's the reason why it's created. Um, yeah, I guess it takes a while. Even on the i9. Oh, it's not an i9, okay. Oh yeah, it's done, okay. So this is, uh, if, if, you, if you saw the URL just now, it's Locals8080, which is the, the code that's running live from your machine. So th this is the code that you have here. and. Um, Basically, whatever you change here will show up here. Um, so the so what we're going to do now is that we are going to enable the we are going to make make the button show right like what, what we said just now even if you're not in beta mode. So right now, as you can see, you are not in beta mode because the buttons are not there. So what we need to do is because because we are using React, um, so we basically need to find the component that represents this sidebar. So what we can do is, uh, because we, like, let, let's assume we don't know where this file is, right? You can just search like one of the button text. So we, we, we can search like, like, can try like, uh, I, I guess, planner. Yeah, pl planner works. So if you, if you tap through a few, a few times, you will find a nav tabs. Uh, a nav tabs dot txx file. So th 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 this is, uh, yeah, so if you open it, this is where all the, all the buttons are. So there. Uh, so all we need to do is that we need to get rid of the the checks, the the props or beta check, and then the the button should appear. If you're familiar with React, like uh, this should be quite obvious. Basically, this is a this is a boolean, and uh, if it's if it's true, this will be rendered. Um, that's it. Yeah. So um, while 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 Lika removes the the things, uh, what uh, he will not save this file. Uh, what will happen is that so when you save, actually uh, two things will happen. So, um, so our tooling is actually quite fancy. Uh, it's also very modern. So what, what will happen is that uh, there's one. Uh, so there are two things, right? The first one is that if you notice now, because he removed the code, the the check now this part of the code is uh, indented wrongly. Like you see, it's, there's this extra two spaces over here, um, and also there's an empty line, which is uh, a, a bit ugly. So uh, what what we have is that we have prettier. If you're if you're from if you're not familiar with that, prettier is a tool that We'll format a code uh, according to some rules that you specify. So we have this setup in our repo. Uh, so when he saves, that will that will happen. The second thing is that we also have a whole module replacement, which which means that um, when a React component is updated, it will be uh, it will be swapped out live without reloading a page. Uh, so when he saves this, what well, what you will expect is that the two buttons will appear here and the code will reformat. So that if you save it. Okay, that, that happened. And yeah, so it is reformatted now and the buttons have appeared. So even though we are out of, we are, the beta mode is off. So th that is our, that, that is basically all the changes we need to make to the files. So now we are going to show you how you can commit and you can make a PR to NUS mods.
so you first need to commit because uh get right so you need to like get at uh get commit yeah we're just gonna push the master on this on this new you know, on this new repo even though it's not best practice but for demo purposes Yeah, so now, now he has pushed it up to GitHub. If you saw, uh, he, he did a Git push. So now, uh, yeah, the, the latest commit is here. So this is the commit that we, that we made, that the, we, we, moved it, we moved it here. So he's going to make a pull request. So it's, yeah, it's just clicking a button called pull request. Uh, if you have never put a, made a pull, re pull request before, this might be quite scary. So like, I remember my first pull request, like, I, I, I was quite scared, right? Because you feel like your code is going to be judged, but uh, don't, you don't need to be scared. So we, um, yeah, we won't judge you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a promise. Yeah, so uh, we, we can just create. Uh, so that they, they, that was reviewing the changes. Uh, he clicked the button to um, to create a PR. So this is where we type a description. So you basically like we have a template here. You just need to follow it. Uh, fill out the, the the sections, and then just make the PR. Yeah, see, we show off your coolness, right? Show off your coolness. Okay. So th this is our PR text. So you're just gonna click create pull request, and it will appear on NUS mod. So now, there, that that's that is our PR. So th this is the this demo shows that uh, it's actually very simple to contribute to NUS mods. So we hope that more people will contribute to NUS mods because uh, right now we our team is three people. We have so many things that we want to do, which Lee Kai will continue talking about. <laughs> oh yeah, we are not releasing it yet. Yes. Yeah, so I hand it, I'll hand it back to Likai to talk about our future plans. Okay, really fast because I realized that we're slightly ahead of, uh, okay. slightly behind time. Yeah. So the future of NUS mods is sort of in flux. Like we've been wanting to do this for like one year, two years. Yeah, but it's taken a long time because well, three of us can't really do much, especially two are full-time employees and one is overloading and doing a lot of random other modules. So, you know, <laughs> very hard yeah. modules, very random, but very hard modules. Yes. And so, you know, we want to add accounts, we want to add syncing, we want to release our GraphQL API, um, and we want to like slightly change how things work with accounts and it sort of like integrate planners with timetable and, you know, add, add like a today page, and, you know, all sorts of random ideas that we want to do but we just don't have the time. So yeah, these are ideas that we want to encourage new contributors to maybe open up issues and see how you guys would want to see NUS mods develop. Yeah. And yeah, any questions? We can only take like two. Yes? Uh, I thought you guys already used So the... <laughs> Unfortunate yeah. reality is no, we are not using GraphQL API yet. But we already have the PR. It's just like well, waiting well, for reviews, yeah. uh, waiting for mm -hmm. approval to merge it for a year. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Why Ah, uh, yeah. So previously we had a normal repo structure. It's just that with a mono structure, with a mono repo structure, it's easier for contributors to just like clone and make changes across the board, especially since there's really not as much code as compared to a real company. So the folders are quite small, although we have many, but they are quite small. So this is sort of to like make changes more rapidly and to encourage contributions. Yeah. Sure. So how, how do you let the scraper run for your uh, so we just have a cron job that basically runs on a computer every day or so. No, it's like every hour now. Oh yeah, I mean it changes depending on your needs. Yeah, we change yeah. every hour. Yeah. But, uh, where do you put our cron jobs? Uh, we just put it on a computer. Is it? Yeah, it's it's just on our one dot server. So that that server holds the yeah. It's just a script lying there, and then we just run it. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I thought you guys are now working officially with the new strategy. 
Yeah, we do. We we do have access to the data, but we need to do some pre pre processing on our end. Like we want to generate. Uh, we we basically do some like uh, value add on top of the NUS raw data. Okay, actually, there's more than that. Uh, so first is that NUS data is stored. Uh, it comes in separate API endpoints, which are quite difficult to um, con to consume. So we basically download everything, then we process things like we combine some very a lot of duplicate records. Uh, we generate pre rec trees. Generate what else do we generate? I mean, we do a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, what's that? What's ETL? The, uh, it's 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 strong, I can't remember what ETL. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, should we? Uh, Runtime is about five minutes. Oh. On a computer, but if you are talking about time, uh, yeah. But if you are talking about time spent writing it, maybe like two two weeks, I think. Yeah, a lot of time. Yeah, a lot of time. All right. I think that's all the questions that we have. If you have more questions, you can ask them at the end of this session. Yeah. Thank you.